November 1971. Contestants and entries have come from all over the rose growing world for the first World Rose Convention ever to be held. And it takes place in Hamilton, New Zealand. You really need three pairs of hands when you're you do, doing you? this. Oh my God. It won't hold up its head. Can you wear it? Not let the wire here. You can't worry. No, they're the same as the silly old yanks. The damn Yankees want to have something done to them. No mechanical aids are permitted when the blooms are shown. But beforehand, the exhibitor is allowed to help his roses along a bit. He can adjust the petals for better effect. But he better not be caught removing any. Earlier, he may have used coal to slow the bud's opening, or warmth to hasten it. But if the rose opens too far, that is, if it blows, then that's the end of it. I packed one on Friday morning, I left home at three, got to Adelaide at seven, caught the plane, nine at Sydney, eleven connection to Auckland, Auckland caught to three, and then down here. Ladies and gentlemen, we would remind you that it has just gone ten o'clock, and that at twenty-five past ten, all staging must be complete, and the hall vacated. Thank you. Those yeah. colours were happen to be left Hi, in. Disqualified. You're disqualified. In Australia, you're allowed one, aren't you? Yeah. Two, 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 two. After two, you're disqualified. But you lose 10% per pellet. The trick is to have the roses exactly right for the judges. Not too closed, not too open. I think I'll transfer that to the top. Um, mm -hmm. uh, transfer that one to the top. All exhibitors, would you please leave the hall? The stems here in that one, to my way of thinking, they're just a little bit short and have more of a clumpy effect. Yes. A little bit to your centre is open already. Would you call the blemish? Oh, no, no. that's, that's, uh, that's just the garden. I, I like this no, entry very much. Uh, we've got a third, get a we third, got a third coming now. Although that's small, they say the formation is good. The judges award each entry points for form, for substance and freshness, and then for stem, balance and foliage. Well, that, that, yes, well, we'll, all right, we'll give this one a third. Stay on this up there, we'll put him out. Yeah. He's a close third. Oh, yes, I think he's just And I think it boils attractive. down very definitely to only those three. Yes. Well, we'll give this one a second. Second. And that third. one third. Many are culled, but few are chosen. You can touch it. At first glance, prize blooms may not appear very impressive to the layman, but the connoisseur employs subtle criteria in his appreciation. He seeks symmetry, purity of colour, and harmony of form and content. And what's behind prize-winning roses? Listen to the international experts. Uh, we used to have to wire every bloom, and it's the most favourable growing area in so-called colour breakthroughs with the white centre and the outer edge. Half of that will go for export, mostly to Finland, Sweden and Norway. They find that they want to spend less time in their garden, unfortunately. They want to play golf and they want to chase girls and do all the other kind of things. Well, when the price is high, you can imagine what happens. They want to plant a variety next year too. You don't know that, uh, the name of the breeder or advertisers there in Japan who suggested that I must come to New Zealand to see the roses here. And the public came too, 70,000 altogether during the six days of Rose World 71. Again, many came especially from overseas. No, I just talk a lot. I read, lay on my back and read the book. <laughs> It's a French name. 
I've never seen anything just quite like it. A gazebo, 2,000 rose bushes, all growing, paths lined with alpine plants, all growing, a stand of native bush, all growing, complete with waterfall, 8,000 gallons of water recycled every hour, and a thermostatically controlled trout pool at 15 degrees Celsius. One, two. You see some? Tours were arranged for visiting Rosarians. This one to Paradise Valley. Oh, there I do, there I do. Ah, you, Ooh, look at the trout down. Yeah, look at the trout down. Yeah, you should have brought your fishing pole. Take a lot of dive in and catch my new bass. Oh, yes. Yeah. See, what's all this? What's this? This is just a pattern they're making up all lot. Back at Rose World, a display of carving by members of the Maori Arts and Crafts Institute. <laughs> Weaving for the kind of dressing up the guides do at Rotorua's thermal areas. The temperature of this water is uh, 200 degrees and it's fed from a lake up higher in the, um, in the forest there. But by the time it reaches here, it's just lukewarm. That surely is beautiful. I've never seen, well, it isn't really beautiful, but I've never seen anything just like it. Smell is something it's, different. Yeah. Oh, I don't mind the sulfur smell, though. Scary. Beautiful country around. A display of aerial top dressing, the millions of tons of fertilizer spread over thousands of acres of farmland, gives you grass. And roses. Do you see? Oh, Dot, I'm going to smell them. <laughs> this is one of the few that really has a scent. There's a simple one round. Oh, Dot, scent. Oh, everyone I see is more beautiful. There are so many now that it's very hard to tell which is which. The day we were there, that was the one that was, was the champion of the day. Because it was yeah. the day I read. You know, this is most exciting when you look at it. Oh, this is my joy. Mm. Oh, Josh. Now, what was the one that we uh, liked to kill there? What was it called? Cronenberg. Cronenberg, yes. I wonder whether they have any there. We'll keep looking, we might find it. Cronenberg. Oh, This one, is, they lose their pinkness a bit. Yes. A display of New Zealand fashions. in 60 classes, contested for by hundreds of exhibitors showing thousands of roses. And to cap them all, a gold cup. Oh yes, took about a month to clean up the hall afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> 